Here's a check on stories we're following for you today on Robin Hood Radio. Pat Pagano's tri-state forecast for today and tomorrow. Sunny, hot, and humid, 90 to 95. Clear tonight, about 70. Friday, cloudy, humid chance of thunderstorms, lower 90s. And Saturday, right now, looks like some sun and showers are possible, 75 to 80. We'll get the full details from Pat in just a few minutes. On Tuesday, COVID-19 cases were reported at the level of over 368,000 since the beginning of the pandemic in Connecticut, which is up about 1,071 since the start of the week. Out of the tests administered, 1,071 came back positive. That results in a positivity rate for the state now at 3.83%. Hospitalizations increased by 22 since Monday, the current total to 391. COVID-19 associated deaths updated every Thursday in the state. As of Thursday, 23 new COVID-associated deaths were reported in Connecticut. Meanwhile, the Connecticut restaurant industry said it's in danger of being wiped out by the Delta variant. The restaurant industry claims it's in danger of losing everything because of the variant, citing results from a recent National Restaurant Survey. The National Restaurant Association survey found that nationally, a majority of consumers changed their dining behavior, which has started to put acute pressure back on the restaurant industry. Adding to the pressure has been increased food and supply prices, capacity limits in several states, and debt loads. The Connecticut Restaurant Association, the National Restaurant Association, and 50 other state restaurant association partners sent a letter to Congress in which they shared the survey's findings. In the letter, they also urged a swift replenishment of the restaurant revitalization fund. Several Connecticut real estate markets now rank among the worst in the nation. According to a study, WalletHub.com, a personal finance website, released this week the results of a study it called 2021's Best Real Estate Markets. Researchers say they compared 300 cities across 18 metrics, including medium home price appreciation and job growth. Hartford was dead last on the list at 300th, also finishing close to the bottom. Waterbury at 292, Bridgeport at 291, New Haven was 276 and Stanford 255th. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is requiring masks in schools, COVID vaccine or tests for teachers. She was sworn in as governor on Tuesday. will also require universal indoor masking for ages 2 and above in K-12 through schools, announcing the plans during her address broadcast during the afternoon. Quote, priority number one, we get children back to school and protect the environment so they can learn and everybody is safe. End quote. She went on to say we need to ensure and require vaccinations for all school personnel with an option to test weekly, at least for now. Well, after years of begging for a stoplight, Great Barrington gets the Department of Transportation Safety fixes to monument by entrance. In Great Barrington, after decades of near misses, occasional crashes at the Mountain Mountain Regional High School entrance on Route 7, the state now appears ready to make safety changes. Speaking at a meeting on Monday of the select board, Vice Chair Lee Davis laid out possible steps which could include reworking the northbound turn lane and adding a warning single device. The Massachusetts DOT might place these devices at Monument Mountain Regional High School entrance to improve safety. Changes were discussed during a July 28th meeting with the town, school district, and state officials. Participants included representatives from Governor Charlie Baker's office, Massachusetts Department of Transportation, as well as State Representative William Smitty Pignatelli from Lenox and State Senator Adam Hines from Pittsfield. Berkshire Hills Regional School Superintendent Peter Dillon said the district is working closely with the DOT and will give presentations about the changes at the school committee meeting coming up tomorrow. By a 9-1 vote on Tuesday, the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education in Massachusetts decided to give Commissioner Jeff Riley the authority to mandate masks in K-12 schools for the imminent start of the third academic year influenced by the COVID pandemic. Riley has said the mandate he plans to impose will require all students and staff to wear masks indoors through October 1st. After that date, under his plan, middle and high schools, where at least 80% of the staff and students are vaccinated, would be able to lift the mask mandate, but only for vaccinated individuals. Winds of the Wilderness Concert, an outdoor concert at 5 p.m. at the Church of St. John's of the Wilderness Classical and Jazz Music. Enjoy their website to learn more and make a contribution, windsinthewildernessconcerts.org. The Northeast Planning Board has their planning board meeting in Sharon, the Planning and Zoning Commission at 5.30. In Sheffield, Planning Board meets at 6 p.m., The Dovertown Board has a regular meeting as well. 
On the 26th in Kent, Planning and Zoning has a special meeting. The 10th Annual Sunset Music Series and Car Cruise wraps up its season. Food, cars, motorcycles, music, and fun. Thursday, 6 till 9 p.m., featuring two guys in suits and ties. On Friday in Norfolk, the outdoor movie will be presented by the Norfolk Community Association. That will be at 6.30. Ankrum Firehouse Tag Sale happens on Saturday, 8.30 till 3.30 at the Firehouse. More information is available at 518-610-2847. The entire community of Millerton is invited to an ice cream social for the groundbreaking of Millerton Community Park at Eddie Collins Memorial Park. Saturday from 3.30 till 5, the rain date is Sunday, Eddie Collins Memorial Park, which is located on North Elm Avenue in Millerton. COVID precautions will be posted prior to the event at millertonpark.org. Together, again, you're asked to join with proof of vaccination on Saturday, August 28th from 5 until 8 o'clock at 104 Spooner Hill Road in South Kent to benefit the Kent Memorial Library, RSVP, to the library. The Northeast Millerton Library used book sale room in the library annex at 28th Century Boulevard open Saturdays from 10 until 1. The Hillsdale Hamlet Committee jams in the Hamlet Concert Series, which is free at the Hamlet Park, runs through October 3rd. That's Saturdays, 4 till 7 p.m. Food and drink from local restaurants for purchase at those events. In Cornwall, on the 28th, walk and talk about metal management with Peter Del Tredici. That is coming up on August 28th. You can meet Democratic uh, candidates on Sunday, August 29th, from 3 till 5 at the Indian Rock Schoolhouse Pavilion in Amenia, hosted by the Amenia Democratic Committee. Roloff Jansen Community Library has a concert in the park. Noah Palmer and friends on Sunday at 3 p.m. Rojanlibrary.org. Our business brief is underwritten by... Morgan's at the Interlaken, interlakenin.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Instagram. And by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com on the web. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will start off today at 35,366.26. The Nasdaq at 15,019.80. And the S&P 500 at 4486.23. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.